Welcome back guys. Today we're trekking along with first semester classes and talking about health assessment. You'll learn in nursing school that assessment is the number one thing that we do as nurses. Before we can do anything, we have to assess the patient. And that's a hint for ATI questions too. If they are asking you what you do first and assessment is on there, you better click that one. Assessment will become second nature to you. Someday it'll be automatic and you won't even have to think about it. But you have to learn what you're looking for first, and that's where this class, Health Assessment, comes in. So my Health Assessment class was set up so that we had it once a week for three hours. So we did Wednesday afternoons from 1 to 4. So my professor taught with PowerPoints for the first half of the class. He would go over the anatomical structures, just so we would have a review of what we were looking at, the normal findings, so what you would see on a healthy patient, and then the abnormal findings. So he would go disease by disease and tell you what you would see in a patient that has that. So anywhere from like a rash or a distended abdomen to little things like concave nails. So the second half of the class, we would do hands-on work with each other. So say we were talking about internal structures of the ear that day. We would grab a scope and we would check our partner's ears and make sure everything was fine. Other days we would go into the lab and we'd lay down on the beds and we would like palpate each other's abdomens or we'd percuss on each other's backs to hear lung sounds or we would get up and do range of motion with each other. So it was just super fun, good way to practice what you would be doing in real life with your patients. So my experience with this class, when I think back to health assessment, I actually had a really hard time with it. And that's because we would talk about so many different things that could be wrong in a human, and they were pretty rare. You don't actually see them in real life. And that's because my professor wanted to cover every little thing you might see, but we weren't really told that that's not something you're going to see or going to assess for. And there are some things we looked at, like with the scopes in the ears, that's something that like nurse practitioners do, but regular registered nurses wouldn't. And that wasn't really specified. I was like, well, crap, I have to be able to do all of this and do it quickly with every single patient. And that's just not the case. In real life, you're only going to have five to 10 minutes to do an assessment on your patient. So you'll learn little things that you'll look at for like each system. So cardio, neuro, respiratory, circulatory, you'll learn like one thing that you assess in every patient. And then if you find something abnormal, then you'll do a focused assessment on someone. And so that wasn't really explained to me and I got really overwhelmed trying to learn every single thing that I needed to and I just didn't need to do that. So my tip for you is to Notice what your nurses are doing in clinical and feed off of that. So see what they do for neuro. Maybe they just look at the pupils or maybe they just do like hand grips and like cardio, they just listen. Um, just the little things like that. Follow what your nurses do. And every time you're in clinical, when they do a quick assessment on someone, follow along with them. Like if they're listening to the heart and then they go to the abdomen, you listen to the heart while they're on the abdomen and then you switch to the abdomen, if that makes sense. You want that practice assessing because to be honest, I still am not that comfortable with it and it just takes time and practice. The other thing I had a hard time with in health assessment was charting. So in real life, you're going to be charting on the computer most likely unless you're in like a small clinic or surgical center. And so they'll have little boxes of each system and when you click on the box, it'll have a drop down menu and you can just click on what pertains to your patient. But in the class, you learn paper charting or narrative charting. And so you have to kind of come up with what you saw and what you didn't see and it was hard to know what you needed to mark down as like, okay, I saw this and it was normal and oh, I saw this and it wasn't normal because you don't wanna write down every single thing you saw, especially if it's all normal findings. So it was hard to find what they called pertinent negatives and pertinent positives. So it's kind of hard to figure that out for me and just like trying to get the words to put it on paper because I'm not good at writing. <laughs> So my tip to you with charting is to just kind of learn what you need to to get through that class because in the future you're going to be doing it on the computer. So don't get too overwhelmed with charting there. Just learn what you have to. So this is the book that you'll most likely be using in your class. It's called Essential Health Assessment by Thompson. And I realize you probably can't read it because I'm using my front camera right now, but it is a thick little book with little writing and it has pretty much every possible assessment that you could do. I don't think there's one out there that's not in this book. And so when you open it up, it'll go assessment by assessment and it just has 
it just has like the steps of how you assess and then it'll have the normal findings and abnormal findings. So it not only tells you how to assess it, but how to interpret what you see. And my tip is to pretty much focus on those normal and abnormal findings because you'll remember the steps to assess from doing that hands-on work in class. So you'll remember that without having to study in the book. When you're reading, focus on those findings and how to interpret what you see. Like I said, you learned so much in this class. We had quizzes at the beginning of every class period and it was really stressful because you would learn so much and you knew there were only gonna be 10 questions on the quiz, but you didn't know what those questions were going to be on. And so my tip to you is to focus on what your professor is emphasizing during class. They should, if they're a good professor, hint to certain things that are important. And so really pay attention to those and study those for your quizzes. Before I end this video, I wanted to say thank you to all you guys that have subscribed recently. I am so appreciative of all your views because they push me to keep making these videos. So thank you for watching. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys next week.